found it day three now I know it's going to be a yarn in this one so I'm only going to actually do the roses moments bit you can see the tree has now got a couple of extra bits on from yesterday's tutorial again I have done these in a finer yarn but I do explain for those who have not already seen it that I do actually do it in a thicker yarn as well so I can show you the different size proportions I've just heard my pussy cat come in so you might be able to hear a bell rattling at the moment so she's just popped in so let's get on to it Again, there was a gorgeous little wooden sign there, back to front to me there, because obviously I'm seeing it in there. So let's get it open. Let's get it open. I can feel it's yarn, because it's squishy. I know it's yarn. Hopefully if you're owning this along with me, you're enjoying your yarns as well. And it'd be nice to hear if any of you are actually doing the short project and seeing how that's going on as well, because I know that they are trying to do that sort of thing. So, oh, this is pretty. This Whoever's making the shawl, it's going to be absolutely stunning because these colours are great. So again, oh, can you see? I have a friend. Here she is. It's Bibi Lee. Come here. She doesn't usually like being picked up much. Say hello, Bibi Lee. This is what Bibi Lee wants. Yes, this is what Bibi Lee wants. She's a nightmare for the book. As you can imagine, she's oh, Down you go. She nearly knocked me over then. Right, so back to this yarn. Can you see the colours? I'm a real sucker for variegated yarn anyway, but how pretty is that? And can you imagine how nice that's going to go? Because the colours are roughly sort of following the same thing. So let's make a gorgeous, gorgeous shawl. I think she's back up behind me. Are you back up? Come on then. What's this? What's this? I might regret this. Pippi. No, she's going to knock the tree over instead. Right, so... On to our next project, so hopefully you're going to stay with me and follow that. Um, well, I say we've got two on the tree now, somebody's pushing it off. I've actually got three because I made two of those. So I will see you in a few minutes. Thank you for watching. Hello, day three of my little Christmas challenge of obviously opening my calendar, which you've just seen. I uh, have a little chat with you guys and then doing you a small project that I am hope you're going to join in with. Now, this is the little guy I've done. We have a little jellyfish. So we have his, well, I know, are they called tendrils? Whatever they're called anyway. So as you can see, I've actually made him out of this yarn because this was the practice one that I did. But the yarn I want to use, so I'm going to move that one to one side, uh, is this gorgeous yarn that I got from What Mustard Made. Now, the reason it's in two pieces is because I've just filmed this once and realised once again, I must really double check the camera, that it's pointing in the wrong direction. So that didn't do me any favours. So I've actually had to undo it and start again. So we're going to be using a double knit yarn for this. We're going to be using a 3.5 millimetre hook. I've got my usual accessories, my scissors, a little stitch marker, a couple of little bead eyes, a little bit of crochet cotton to do his mouth and some just regular cotton to sew on the eyes so we're going to get straight into it we don't need these these are all in our way i'll move the beads over there because i'm going to lose them and let's get going he's a typical amigurumi style so we're going to start with our slip knot onto the hook now because i've undone this i'm really worried i'm not gonna have enough to finish his head but we'll see how it goes so two chain six double crochets into the first chain so we have one two three four five and six we're now going to have two double crochets into each of those six end up with twelve one one so that's our first one two in our second one two in our third, two in the fourth, two in the fifth, and two in the final one, two in our sixth. So we now have 12 stitches on there. Pull that nice and tight there. We're now going to do another two in each one, leaving us with 24 then. So we have, this is our first one, so we've got one. So it's just two double crochets into each one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, 
seven, nearly there, eight, nine, three more, that's ten, eleven, and twelve. So we should now have twenty-four stitches. With this sort of pattern, it's not the end of the world if you did happen to have 25 or if you did happen to have 23. It's not going to make a massive difference to your work. Now, I'm going to be using my stitch marker a little bit big for this, I think, but I wanted to keep using the ones I got in my advent calendar and my Christmassy items. So, in he goes. And we're going to be doing just a round of double crochet. So, it should be 12 double crochets round. But we're going to do that three times. So this is our first round. I have my stitch marker in, so I don't need to think about counting. So I'm not going to think about counting. If you want to be really strict with yourself, you should be counting 24 stitches at this point to be counted as a round. I'm just going to make sure I've got pen and paper, which I have. And when I've gone round, I'm just going to mark off that that is one round. As soon as I catch up with that stitch marker, which isn't far away. So it is a little bit big to be working with with something this small but uh, like I, say, I want to crack, start using all my Christmassy bits and bobs right how many more do you think mm, three possibly one two and three so that's one round I have my pen here and I'll just mark that down so we need two more rounds just one double crochet into each double crochet so off we go. This yarn is so soft going through my fingers. It's weird. It's sort of almost sliding through my fingers. Not not in a bad way. It's just sort of gliding. Perhaps sliding is the wrong word. It sort of makes it sound like it's slippy. You can see that. There's a little bit of cotton there. That's where I finished him off last time and sewn it's, had sewn his eyes in. That is not a fault with the yarn. That is just where I tried to stitch his eyes in and when I had to undo it because I've only got this small amount so I had to undo it all to do it again for you so round we go I'm going to get through it this time because this is actually the third time I've tried doing this so that is round two so I don't really need to mark this one off because I know there's only one more round anyway so round we go, all the way back round until we get to that stitch marker. I hope everything's going well with everyone's festive planning. As much as these are Christmassy sort of ideas, this is certainly not a project that has to be for Christmas. I think it's just a cute gifty idea for any time of the year. So I hope it's going to be one that you're going to be able to have a go at or that somebody's going to get as a little gift. Or it could go on your Christmas tree. There is a lot of sea themed Christmas decorations about this year. Right, we're round. So can you see we're getting our little basket shape coming in there. So I think that looks quite cute. And just look at the colours. They look absolutely gorgeous. Right, our next round it feels weird now because I'm having to shake this right you see it's dangling about um, because of the way I had to roll it up now this is going to be two together then one DC in the next four after that so in we go we pull it through we don't finish the stitch into the second one we pull it through you should have three and we pull it through all three then one double crochet in each of the next four so one two three and four, two, and then four, one, two, three, four, two together again, and four, one, two, three, four, one more time, two together. And then four double crochets one two three and four that worked perfectly now to reiterate 
if I can't speak, to reiterate what I've just said, I did two double crochets together, then four separate ones. Two together, then four separate ones. And I did that little grouping of the two together and four stitches four times. So we've decreased by four stitches now. So we're back to 20. Now we now got to do is little frill. Now this is where I'm worried that I'm going to run out of the yarn. That's going to be three trebles into one stitch. One slip stitch into the next one. Three trebles into the next one. We're just going to be alternating these techniques. So it'll be three trebles, one slip stitch, three trebles, one slip stitch all the way around. So it's only a little bit left. We might, we should do it because obviously I've done it once and undone it. But I sometimes lose it when you cut your yarn. So in we go, slip stitch, three trebles, one, two, three, one slip stitch, three trebles, one, two, three, one slip stitch, three trebles, one, two, three, one slip stitch. About halfway now. So again, three trebles. One slip stitch. Let's have a little look. You can see we're nearly there now. You can see where we started. I think I've split that one as well. So be careful there with the splitting of the yarn. Three trebles. One. Two. And three, one slip stitch, three trebles, one, two, three, one slip stitch. I reckon one might be just four, is it one more, maybe two? I don't know, let's have a look. So we've got one, two, three the yarn looks like it's just going to do it and i split it again there we go all yarn will split especially when you're rushing so the thing is don't rush i'm going to undo that completely again the beauty of crochet as i mentioned before you can undo and it's not exactly the end of the world so that's one two and three trebles and i'm just going to do one slip stitch in there and that should it so you can see it creates like a little frill all the way around them so i've actually done one less that's why i've managed to get a bit of extra yarn there so let's finish it off let's take this stitch marker out it's almost bigger than him i think it's come out slightly smaller let me put that down but that doesn't matter it can come out lots of different sizes it really doesn't matter we look how cute is it's come out a lot smaller it just shows how your different yarns and different companies can make a difference but for this sort of project i think it's great actually when they come out different sizes so i'm quite chuffed with that it makes a really cute little hat as well that's adorable now i'm going to show you how to do the legs i have already done one because as i say i part made in once already haven't i and the little legs obviously go inside the jellyfish and they're just stitched in here i'm going to show you how to do that leg so i'm going to pop that there don't need that little bit of yarn i will keep it just in case i get very close to the end and i need a little bit slip knot on the hook and we're going to just do 20 chains so bear with me while i count one two three four five six seven eight they don't have to be tight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, the thing with this, if you want a longer leg, you do more chain. It's as simple as that. This technique can be used for many things. I've used it to do a mane on a unicorn. I've used it on the t as a tail on things. I've just used it as a general decoration, as a fringe. There's all sorts you can do with it. Because all we're going to do is three double crochets into each chain. That's it. Just three 
into every single one. Try to make sure you don't miss any because it's very easy to miss the chain because the previous stitch cannot sometimes make this, these stitches tighten up and you can't always see it. That's why I said don't do a tight chain, just relax, try and relax when you're doing it. First bit's awkward to hold because as you can see it's already curling up round itself which can be very annoying when you're trying to do the rest of it. But you'll see what I do at the end to sort of straighten that out a bit. So just three chain into every single one. I'm not going to do all the tendrils or legs or whatever we decided we're calling them with you because they're all exactly the same. You can alter the length though, as I mentioned, which might be quite nice because, you know, they can vary on a jellyfish. And this is a little bit of a fantasy jellyfish anyway. I don't think there's any jellyfish this colour. There might be. Perhaps there's one hiding deep dark in the sea. So we go in, we keep going, we keep going. The only problem when you've got a long chain, but just three double crochets into each one. I've done four on my previous one. I've got to sort of play it by ear on how much I'm going to get out of this little piece of yarn. Um, I'm hoping to get four like my other one. It could possibly take five. But I think you need to adjust that on your yarn and on your tension as well because everybody's got a slight variation. We're almost there. This is number, I don't know, we did 20. So one, two, three, four. Well, we're on about 16. But again, you don't need to count. Just remember it's three in every single one. And that's all that matters. So I'm trying to keep these all quick and simple projects. This is the last one. Tighten it up. Cut it up. Oh, well, I think I've got enough. I'll probably get another two out of that because I've already got the one, haven't I? Pull it tight. And basically, just give it a little stretch. And there you go. A little curly tendril. As I say, which can be used for doing other pieces of work. So I'm going to just take the two. So it looks nice with the variegation because obviously each one's going to come out slightly different. Now, basically, I'm just going to be sewing it to the inside right at the top. I'm just going to be sewing it right up there. Then when you turn it over, you get the little bits hanging down from there. So it works out quite nicely like this little guy that you've got here. You can see some of his are different lengths. But to be honest, I did do them all the same. I've just stretched some a little bit more. So it gives you different lengths, which I think looks quite nice. Rather than being all uniformed, I think they do need to be slightly different. Now, as far as the beads are concerned, I did stitch them on with a normal sort of sewing cotton, just a, a bog standard sewing cotton here. And for the mouth, as I've said, I did use a crochet cotton and embroidery thread, maybe a six strand embroidery thread would be good as well. You don't have to sew face on at all. It's not a toy, this one. You do have to be careful because these obviously, if they're not fully secure, can come off. Um, and I think, you know, you don't want sort of a child getting sort of tangled up with this. If they're a young one, obviously if they're a bit older, it's okay. Christmas tree, possibly? I'm not sure. I don't think so for mine because I'm very traditional, but I do think it's adorable and I will have him hanging up in my craft room and also his little friend. I might finish him and put him on my tree, which is over here, which will be over in, on my other shelf when I actually do my other parts of my videos. So I might put him on there because it's one of my Christmas projects that I've done. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you get to make one of these little guys. I was really quite pleased with him. I've got some other projects coming up, obviously, every day. I'm going to try and do a project of crochet or sort of approximately crochet there might be a few bits thrown in there as well but hopefully you enjoyed that please like subscribe and share notification button at the bottom if you did enjoy it and you'll be up for my next vlog because it's going to be one for the next what we are on is for tomorrow so i have 21 more to do so thank you very much for joining me and hope to see you soon